Welcome. Welcome. Hello, I'm Creflo Dollar, and welcome to your world. Every 13 seconds, there is a divorce in America. The National Survey of Family Growth has shown the probability of a first marriage lasting a decade is less than 68%. Now, this is a sobering stat because it makes you wonder if it's even possible to sustain a committed, fulfilled, intimate marriage that doesn't end in divorce. Now, on today's program, I'm going to share some of the risk factors that threaten a healthy marriage. I'm also going to give you some tools to divorce-proof your relationship. Today, you're going to meet a couple who have been together for nearly a decade and only recently got engaged. They're ready to finally make the jump, but they're worried about their relationship being able to handle this issue, this institution called marriage. They want to find out how to stay together forever and not become another statistic. Get ready till death do us part right here on your world. My guests today met on Twitter and started dating shortly after. They have been together almost 10 years. Now, a few months ago, he proposed and she said yes. Now they are unsure how marriage will change them and their relationship. They join us to gain insight on the keys to a happy, lasting marriage. Please welcome Autumn Joy and Ed to the Your World Show. Ed, tell us about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? I'll enjoy the same thing. I'm Ed Jones. I played basketball overseas, played in many different countries, and recently stopped playing um, within the last year, year and a half. I've been building my photography, videography, editing business, and, um, and, a basketball, and I'm a basketball trainer as well. Okay. Hello, my name is Autumn Joy. I am in the entertainment industry, so I'm a radio personality. I've been doing that for about 15 years on and off. I am now on air in Raleigh, North Carolina, K97.5, and my show is number one, yay! So yeah, I, I love hosting parties, I love hosting events, um, just building up my brand. And we met on social media, so I'm, I'm really heavy on social media. He's not as heavy, <laughs> um, but yeah. Let's talk about your relationship and what do you want me to know? We, we just got engaged, so my biggest question, of course, is to how to continue to move forward with the happiness, not just, you know, emotionally, but also physically as well. Yeah, what about you? Basically, you know, the same thing, just how do we move forward and, and make it, make this the next step um, in building ourselves, building our relationship with each other with our family and everybody. How do we keep that fire going? You're concerned about the longevity of this relationship yes. and some things that can make it a toxic relationship and some things that can actually produce that longevity. Right. Would the both of you say that there is a, a slight fear concerning the longevity of the relationship? I think for me, it's because of where our relationship has come from and we've made huge strides. Mm -hmm. I want to be sure and feel secure that I can 100% rely on my man to take care of me and take care of our son and our family and to be that provider that I grew up with my father in the house. We're doing better than what we were, but I just am kind of scared that once we walk down the aisle, everyone's like, marriage changes everything. So it's just really the fear of, of, of commitment at this point because I don't want to commit because I'm not too sure if I want to stay here. 
if it doesn't work out the way it's supposed to work out. Initially, before he proposed, I was one foot in, one foot out. We'd been together for about six and a half years. We were broken up for a year. Within that year, I really got to know myself a lot more and I really realized I may not even need to get back with him. I can just kind of do this on my own. Once he did propose, I did feel like, okay, he made that commitment because where I was, was it's six years, I'm not getting any younger, you know, I'm still cute, I can, you know, I can go out and, you know, <laughs> ladies, you know what I mean. Um, you look just like my daughter when you said that. <laughs> you know, but you think like, you know, am I, am I giving the best years of my life to someone that doesn't fully want to commit to me? I have so much to offer the world and so much to offer him. So when he did finally propose, it was almost like, finally, thank you, you know, yes, we're, we're going to move forward with this. The first thing you recognize about marriage, it's two people coming from two different trainings, ideologies, and the way you think about stuff, how you were raised. Mm -hmm. And so the objective is how do we take those two different people, which, which is very good now, uh, because you know, you're different because you have some weaknesses and strengths. You're different because you have some weaknesses and strengths. The coming together is to eliminate the weaknesses by exchanging your strength for his weaknesses and your strength for her weaknesses. And all of a sudden you're, you're connected together. Marriage is a partnership. It's not one person dominating and, and the other person submitting to that domination. The Bible makes it very clear and supports biblical equality. And that means that there's no longer male or female, but now in Christ, we're one. And so this is a relationship of equality and it is a equal partnership. And I know you heard others talk about where, you know, the man, he's supposed to do this and the wife is supposed to do this. And that can be scary when you teach people how to do that based under the covenant of the law, which Jesus came to deliver us from the covenant of the law. And now we're on the covenant of grace. So now we're talking about partnership and the agreement in a sense to come together as partners to discuss the development of a corporation, which is the family. Yeah. And in that discussion, we talk about the parts and the roles that we will play as partners. And they're not gonna always be traditional. So we come together and we talk about the roles as far as our strengths are concerned. For example, Taffy and I, we had to figure out how the clothes were gonna get clean. <laughs> and so I said to her, I love washing. To me, washing is nothing. Put it in a machine, now, that ain't nothing. I said, I hate folding. She says, I hate washing, mm -hmm. but I love folding. Okay. Bam, we, we figured <laughs> out how to do that. So it's not a traditional role. And I wouldn't dare say to her, you keep working and then you come home and serve me at the same time. That's not an equal partnership. The second thing is, any relationship that's based in selfishness is doomed for destruction. Mm -hmm. In other words, self-centeredness cannot be allowed in any relationship. A relationship with your best friend is not gonna work when someone is self-centered. I don't care what relationship you have, self-centeredness is the destruction of any relationship. For example, Ed, what she does to you is none of your business. How she treats you is none of your business. Your business is how you treat her. Same thing with you, Autumn Jor. How he treats you is none of your business. Your business is how you treat him. Now, can you see by doing that, both of you are out of the center and you keep one another in the center of the circle? Because now here's the problem. Self-centeredness will always produce bitterness. Every sin and every bitter, hurtful, painful thing that comes from relationship, first of all, derives from people being in the center. Now, probably every issue that's been a problem, can you identify where you have been in the center? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense, huh? It does. It's like yes. light bulbs just going off. Yeah, <laughs> light bulbs going off. <laughs> now, based on just those two things that I just shared with you, I would like for you both to take time to address the light bulb. Talk about how it was dark. And now that you know this, how it may give you an opportunity to not fear this relationship. And then I'll take you to the point of showing you how marriage can actually be beneficial. I think for me, the selfishness 
is what really resonated with me the most. I always make decisions, career decisions, without talking to him. And he's amazing. Like, he's never been like, no, we can't do it. But I never was like, okay, hang on, before I consider this offer, let me speak with Ed and see how he feels. I just automatically assume he's gonna be okay with it, let's go. Another issue that I did have was letting go of like, cause I'm such like a, not an independent woman, but I'm very like. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> so, yes, you are. I'm an independent woman. Yes, very okay, independent. I'm very, I'm, I am super independent, and it was hard for me to. <laughs> now, this is so interesting because are you an independent woman or are you a selfish woman? I don't think, okay, I'm the middle child of five, and so if you read up on middle children, we are, we typically do have like selfish tendencies, but I don't consider myself to be selfish. You know, maybe I am. You know what, Dr. Dollar? I will say this now, yes, I am selfish, guys. This is why we're here, because I have been selfish and I, I had a problem with relinquishing power. I wasn't allowing him to be the man in my life. I, was, I would constantly snap at him. I was, again, making decisions without consulting him because I felt like, oh, he doesn't, he doesn't know anything about it. I'll, I'll just make the decision because I, I know more about it. Now, 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 this is interesting, you know, because when we talk about manhood, mm -hmm. If Ed is trying to live out manhood from the wrong definition, all we're doing is creating another problem. Here's how I define manhood. It just made sense to me. Let me go and let me get my definition from the guy that knows about manhood more than anybody, and it would be Jesus Christ. And the definition turns out like this, manhood is sacrificial servanthood. My wife came in the house one day and I was washing the dishes and finished cooking her dinner. I don't want to impress you. I got one of those little cookers. <laughs> Takes yeah. 10 minutes to do it. You put it all in there at one time and mash a button. But I was sweeping the kitchen floor. She walked in and she was just standing there looking at me, smiling. I said, what are you doing? She said, boy, you sure look sexy with that broom in your hand. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Something, maybe if I get the mop and the broom, you know. <laughs> you know? But, but my point is, sacrificial servanthood defines the very epitome of a man. It's when I can serve my wife and other people and to serve my wife when I don't want to. That's now when I begin to produce real manhood, how you treat them, how you talk to them, how you respect them, what you're willing to do to love them. It's sacrificial servanthood. It's easy to walk around and say, well, you know, I'm a man because you know, I have a job, I have all this. I mean, what if you have a woman who makes more money than you? So here's the deal. I say, well, my wife makes more money than me. Great, because it's a part of the corporation. It's a part of my team. It's a part of my partnership. For me to feel threatened because she makes more money than I do, it's just shame knocking on the door, trying to attack and put its claws into my manhood. Mm -hmm. My manhood is not defined by what I get out of the locker room. It's not defined by what I get out of an uncle who, you know, it's defined by sacrificial servanthood and how am I willing to practice that, not only with my family, but also with others. Because you're the guy that's always going to be the head, the guy that's always leading, the guy that's always going to be in charge, and the guy that's going to be successful. Because while they look at your sacrificial servanthood and call it weak, it's really, it's really strong because what we're talking about is not weakness. It, it's strong to have to deal with somebody who bought some, some baggage along and you're saying, I'm gonna serve you and I'm gonna love you through your problem and through your situation. And so all you're doing is sowing seeds and setting yourself up to get just what you gave and it comes back to you. But if you listen to people who don't understand real manhood and then they'll convince you that's not how it's supposed to be done, then you'll join the stats of divorce, separation, because you're trying to live by man law. And man law, all it does is invite shame to come in. I mean, where do we get these things from? Man law, you know, men don't cry. That's the biggest bunch of bull I've ever heard before in my life. You know how intimate it is? If you ever have a chance to share tears with your wife, that's, that's, that's intimacy is defined as come into me and see what nobody else has ever seen before. I want you to respond to what I just talked about as far as real manhood is concerned. And then I wanna hear what Autumn Joy has to say about this concerning real manhood. 
That was a great, <laughs> it was a great point. I mean, I do feel like I sacrifice and do a lot of stuff for my family. You know, I've, I'm one of those type of people, I won't buy a whole bunch of new this, new that, new everything. I'll do stuff for them more than I will for myself. I'll cook, you know, I, I, I clean too, you know. It, it's, I don't see it as, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm washing a dish, I'm not a man. Like, it's dirty, it's dirty, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> and like the same thing with the broom with you, when I'm cooking, <laughs> She walk up, she'll walk up behind me like, mm. <laughs> it does something. You know. They need to put that in the manhood, man. Exactly. exactly. So, Having I mean. problems in the bedroom? Get a broom. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I mean, sacrifice is definitely something that, you know, I, w I would rather do for her, and my son, or my family than I would, you know, do, I do more for them than I would do for myself. And I wanted her to hear that. So whenever she said, talks about being a man, mm -hmm. she won't be outside of the boundary of that definition. Respond to what we just talked about. So I'm gonna be honest. When we first met on Twitter, I did not think that he was gonna be this amazing. Given like past you know, guys that I dated, I literally prayed, I was like, God, listen, I'm sick of like the athlete type. I was like, I do want athletic looking and I do want tall, um, but I want minus all the problems. And in comes this six, seven, attractive, wonderful man. And from day one, I never had an issue of feeling like he had like straight eyes or we've never had an issue with infidelity or I felt like, you know, he cheated on me. It's, ne it's never been that. Our issues have always been the usual financial stability, things of that nature. But when it comes to being a man, I feel like he has all of that. I come in, he's like cleaning, he'll cook sometimes, he makes the best omelets, you know what I mean? So him being a man, you know, I, I never had to question that. You know, when it comes to taking care of our family, he definitely puts us first. There have been times in the past where it's been a little bit more challenging, but I'd say within like the past year and a half, I've definitely noticed a huge change in how he, he handles certain situations. So. so you know, without a doubt, you have a real man. Absolutely. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Do you love her? Undoubted. Okay, and do you love him? Absolutely. And you guys are pretty serious about commitment mm -hmm. to this partnership. Yes, it's, it's, it's never been, it, I've been like this, I don't know, my whole life. Like, if I'm in a relationship and I love you. So you're it. committed to this, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're afraid to be married. Why? Well, it's, I don't know if afraid is the right word. Oh. I just, I wish there was like a whole nother word outside. It's not so much afraid. I just want to. And I, and I think he's accomplished this and he's, he's continuing to accomplish it. I just want to feel like my man will be able to be my man and take care of, of our family. Because again, I told you, we struggled with it in the past. So I think it's for me more so of like, I just want to make sure that he understands like, okay, this is forever. So if, you know, let's say hypothetically, I get fired next week and it's taken me a while to look for work, I need to be able to look at you and say, babe, can you get rent this month? You know. So you I guess what you're saying is you're having some doubts whether or not he would be able to do that. And you know that all doubt is based in fear. Okay. I did not until now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all doubt is based in fear. And so before I marry him, which is a commitment, I'll just maintain this commitment until I can get rid of that fear of whether or not he can take care of us. Here's the deal about marriage. The marriage institution has with it an empowerment spiritually that you will never know and that what other people will never know until they realize the spiritual implication of marriage. In other words, a marriage is an institution not created by the world, not created by government, but it's created by God. And so God put within this marriage institution the ability to increase your empowerment because through your commitment, you're saying that no matter what happens, we together are good 
and we together can overcome anything. It's not just you and Ed now. Mm -hmm. It's you and Ed and God in this marriage institution against life. And this is what a lot of people will never encounter is that unseen empowerment that comes from an institution that's been created by God. Well, that's religious. Well, call it what you want to, but there's an empowerment that is so real mm -hmm. that it impacts every area of your life from the bedroom to the boardroom. See, if we've agreed that you have a, a man, a real man, mm -hmm. there is nothing he won't do to take care of his family, which means now, listen, you know, I understand that if something happens in our corporation where you lose your job or this and my business that I am working on right now is not getting the job done. Oh, I understand. I'll go get two or three jobs. I'll do whatever I have to do to make that happen. But the fear of him not being able to do that. You remember this? The thing you fear the most will come upon you. So make sure your fear is not creating something you don't want. There's something about the marriage that's an anchor to that relationship. I've got something that anchors my mind and my soul. I've got something that, that says that I'm committed. I wear something that says that I'm committed. I, I have reminders everywhere. This ring is a token, a sign that I am committed to someone else. So when someone else comes up I'm like, don't you see this? There's some, this is a this is a token, like, like the rainbow is a token in the sky that, of the promise that God said that it will never rain again. This is a token. Mm -hmm. But that marriage institution, how you treat her, you treat yourself. How she treats you is how she treats herself. It's, it's no man is wanting to try to do something to damage you. You treat her like your own flesh and, and vice versa. There are spiritual implications that sometimes people don't factor into their lives. And over a long period of time, even though we get examples and say, well, you know, these people have been together for 20 years and they were never married, but you don't know the hell that they have experienced and maybe continue to experience or how much better life could have been had they went ahead and decided, I want to do this thing God's way. And in every area of our lives, we got a choice. We're going to do it our way or God's way. We're going to be self-occupied or God-occupied. And that's going to determine everything about our lives. So right believing is going to produce right living. But wrong believing is going to produce wrong living. And you've got to decide what you're going to do. And you've got to decide, is this what you want your children to see in the model of relationships? And how toxic that can be in their lives. I think the number one enemy to you making that decision is fear. And fear is basically having a really hard time believing that what God promised is gonna to come to pass. That's the very foundation of it. I'm having a hard time believing that this is going to really make the difference. It will, because you think about leaving, you have to look at that ring, you have to look at that family. All of that needs to be in the anchor of your soul. I hope that somehow some of this helped kind of give you some things to, to think about. It did. And maybe when I meet you guys a little later on, we can do a follow up and you can now help us to compare <laughs> in contrast yeah. the difference with marriage versus commitment. <laughs> marriage is a blessing and a gift from God. And when we embark on this important spiritual journey, placing God at the center of the relationship strengthens and sustains it. Now my announcer is going to share with you some special resources I've put together to help you in your marriage and all of the relationships in your life. Watch this and I'll be back in a moment. Statistics show that couples today aren't just waiting to get married, they're avoiding this long-standing institution at record rates. The backbone of our society is in decline simply because we can't figure out if our mate is the right one. Today, you met Ed and Autumn Joy, a successful couple in business and entertainment, yet they are paralyzed with the decision to marry. Through a little biblical insight, Creflo guided this young power couple and gave them the tools they needed to finally decide if they were ready for Till Death Do Us Part. 
There are many more couples in this difficult situation, and you can help them when you respond today. Call now with your support of this program. Your tax-deductible gifts help ensure this platform continues to bring hope to millions. When you respond today as his way of saying thank you, Creflo will include one of his most requested resources, Dating 101. In this eye-opening DVD, you'll learn how to identify Mr. or Ms. Wright and recognize the hindrances to finding your divine soulmate. This is a must-have for singles and for married couples. Consider this a boot camp of sorts to get you back to the basics of a successful partnership. Creflo will also send you his masterclass, Keeping God in the Center. This two-part audio presentation is the answer to success in relationships. In Keeping God in the Center, Creflo helps you understand the dangers of toxic relationship killers like pride, anger, selfishness, and more. Plus, he walks you through the freedom found in humility and the ultimate untapped power of grace. And as a special bonus, if you call during this program, Creflo will also include a full-length copy of today's discussion. You'll laugh and cry as Ed and Autumn Joy move through the cycle of discovery, revelation, and hope. Call right now with your tax-deductible love gift of only $35 to receive Dating 101, Keeping God in the Center, and a copy of today's show. And remember, each time you support your world with Creflo, you are helping the world receive the transforming revelation of God's grace. This offer is for a limited time only. Call now to receive this amazing resource. Well, I want to thank our guests, Autumn, Joy, and Ed, for opening up about their relationship with us. Listen, if there's something going on in your world today, please reach out and connect with me online at yourworldwithcreflo.com. Stay connected with me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll see you next time right here on Your World. Experience three days of refreshing your heart, soul, and mind at the 2018 Women's Conference, Radical Revolution. Come on, you know this is going to be an amazing experience. Spaces are limited. Register today. The Radical Revolution Women's Conference takes place March 15th through 17th. You don't want to miss out. On Your World, you hear real stories from real people. Each guest receives a reminder of God's plan for good in their lives with the Grace Certificate. Today, you can receive your very own Grace Certificate. This certificate is an inspiring reminder that you are the righteousness of God. Simply go to yourworldwithcreflo.com now or text GRACE to 51555 and download your own certificate in minutes. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.